half a day in Manana Sidzu as many of God's blessings to all of you. A hundred days ago, Guam entered its first week in the last year of this decade. We made history. Actually, we're making history with the inauguration of Guam's first female governor, Armagahaga Lulian Guerrero, taking over the helm of the executive branch of government, while the first female majority makes up the 35th Guam legislature. As the speaker of the Ilfimina Trentai Cinco in La Slatura in Guam, I am honored to be part of this amazing time on our island as Guam's working women, mothers, grandmothers, homemakers, nurses, doctors, attorneys, educators, law enforcers, judges, and entrepreneurs are taking on leadership positions and excelling. There are more female chiefs of staff in the legislature and women in head of cabinet positions in the executive branch than ever before. The glass ceiling on Guam is about to shatter in a million pieces and there's still more room for women empowerment. To date, more than 90 bills have been introduced in just the first three and a half months of the 35th Guam Legislature, addressing a myriad of issues from healthcare to education to Guam's economy. Any concerns you may have had about the many first-time legislators, you can thrust aside. Legislative Secretary Amanda Shelton and Assistant Majority Leader Kelly Marsh Titano are both working with immense focus on the advancement of women, the protection of our Menamco and Menhoban, as well as taking steps to undergo decolonization and protect the Chamorro culture and traditions respectively. Senator Pito Cherlahi, a Vietnam veteran, former mayor, and former law enforcement officer, has conducted assessments of our police force and correctional facilities. As somebody who has the experience wearing a badge as the rank and file in the Guam Police Department, he has worked closely with Adeloupe and is addressing the safety concerns in our neighborhoods. In January, he began the dialogue to put more boots on the ground to fight crime, and our Maga Haga heard him loud and clear. Soon. 30 men and women in blue will be members of the Guam Police Department. He is also working on creating a regional veteran center for those who proudly served our island. We must never forget their sacrifices for the liberties that we take for granted. Freshman Senator Sabina Paris has introduced a myriad of bills addressing invasive species to zero emission vehicles. In order to address the issue facing our environment, just this past weekend, I had taken on the trash challenge that was brought up to us by Senator Amanda Shelton. I reflected on my days as a little girl when we would go to the beach and swift through the sand and find shells. This past Sunday, we sifted through the sand and found syringes, pipes, plastic, and broken bottles. Ladies and gentlemen, this breaks my heart and it made me ask myself in this, what I want to leave behind for my grandson Tatum. We need to do something, we need to do better, and most importantly, we need to act now. I've had a lot of constituents wanting to contribute positively to our local economy, yet they face roadblocks from our own government. First time policymaker Senator Moylan has worked on legislation to bring back the Guterres administration's one-stop shop for all your permitting needs. He is also the author of legislation to allow more goods into a single container, thus making shipping more cost effective and ultimately lowering your grocery bill at the register. Freshman Democratic Senator Clint Rigel was able to draft and pass legislation on adult use cannabis, which Governor Lou Leon Guerrero signed into law. When I delivered my inaugural address, I mentioned previous laws I had introduced that had not been enforced. Today, I would like to report that the KC Conception Compassionate Cannabis Use Act is one step closer to implementation. A medical cannabis board has been impaneled and meetings are underway. Another bill that I passed that was never fully implemented was the bed and breakfast bill. We were losing out on revenues to the tune of $22 million. The men and women and Department of Revenue and Taxation have been hitting the streets, knocking on doors, and ensuring that this black market booming industry is regulated. Guam shores are always open to those who want to make our island their home. All we ask is that if you want to do business on our island paradise, you must pay your fair share. 
We are working on standing up Guam's first film office, which could bring millions of dollars to our tax base annually. The film office, by Gita's estimate, shows that about $9 million could be generated for our local economy just from the film industry. While the bill had been signed into law since the 31st Guam legislature, to date, the film office has not yet been stood up. I am working closely with Gita, PBS, and Adaloop to seek their opinion on a draft bill that would transfer the authority for this endeavor from Gita to PBS. PBS has the subject matter experts and is also in dire need for resources. So I urge you to stay tuned for an influx of fun, exciting changes to your local programming. I know for sure I am very excited. My office is working tirelessly on legislation that will provide much needed funding for many of Guam's nonprofit organizations, which have been helping our islands less fortunate for years. Several terms ago, I introduced Guam's first and only legislation to address the crime of human trafficking. This year, you will see follow-up legislation that will introduce programs to help victims of human trafficking get away from international sex trade and live normal, productive lives. Policy making, as I have learned in my last six terms, is no easy task. There's always two sides to every issue, and there's no way to make everyone happy. But that only means that your input matters for the sake of our island's future. We may not agree on certain issues, and we could possibly be on opposite sides of the spectrum. But as your public servant, I commit to you one thing, and that is the fact that my door will always be open. We need to engage in dialogue. There are things you know that I don't, and going back to my days as an athlete, it's never about me, but about the team. If we can engage in dialogue for the sake of Team Guam, you know that you can count me in. God bless you. God bless Guam. Si Jusun Bini Dici Hamzu Todos, Sainamasi.